The National Wildlife Federation's Campus Ecology Program has been helping more than a third of our nation's colleges and universities conserve resources and restore the environment. This education initiative takes the National Wildlife Federation's common sense approach to America's colleges. America's colleges and universities are a microcosm of American society. Nearly all campuses have housing, offices, roads, food services, entertainment, and preserved open space. People from all walks of life live and work on campus, consuming large amounts of food, water, and energy. And they generate significant amounts of pollution and waste. Great opportunities exist for perfecting new conservation practices on campus that can save energy, cut waste, curb pollution, and moreover, educate the environmental leadership needed today and tomorrow. Students, faculty, administrators, and campus staff all serve an important role in such a worthwhile effort. During this program, you'll see how ecology is an integral part of life on four campuses, how these conservation programs are bridging theory with practice within those settings, as well as how these colleges and universities are addressing environmental concerns that affect not only their own campuses, but the broader communities of which they are a part. By lifting up examples of what's working on the nation's campuses, the Campus Ecology Program is designed to serve as a beacon, a beacon of hope and inspiration that's helping to guide this crucial movement forward. In response to increased traffic demands, the University of Colorado at Boulder initiated a student bus pass program. The results have been remarkable. This alternative approach to student transportation isn't just saving the environment. It's also saving the university an estimated $1 million each year, largely because the student bus pass program is eliminating the need to construct new parking garages. Our program came about as a need to um, find a way to ease traffic congestion and parking issues, both here on campus and within the city of Boulder. So the university and the city of Boulder work closely on this project to alleviate some of those problems because we have such an impact on the neighborhoods. If you think about what the campus represents, uh, we have about 30,000 people that come to the same point within this community every day and depart from virtually the same point every day that lends itself to mass transportation. Student environmental groups have played a, a big role because they see the importance of getting folks out of single occupant vehicles, both in terms of making the local area more livable and to try to avoid things like greenhouse gas emissions. Students love it. They get a, they get a free ride anywhere in Denver, anywhere in Boulder. That We run the buses very late at night so that they can come home on the weekends and they don't have to worry about driving especially on the college campus where people are out having a good time. And we get a huge response from it. The way that it functions is every student is required to pay a mandatory fee for each semester that they're enrolled. Uh, then what happens is students are able to show their student ID and it functions as a pass on all of the local and regional buses. So with your student ID, you can ride any bus in the city of Boulder, any bus in Denver or any of the other cities within the five county RTD district and the regional buses that take you to the airport, take you to Denver, take you up to uh, the, our closest ski area. A lot of the buses around here have uh, frames on the front that you just throw your bike onto. You lock it up and basically when you get to your stop, you jump out, the bus, tra bus driver will wait a couple extra, extra seconds for you to go out, grab your bike, take it off the rack, and you can ride around. A student can come up to a bus stop, and if they've missed a bus, they know another bus will be there within 10 minutes, worst case. So if they plan their day, they can hop on a bus and go when they want to and where they want to. We have several measures of success. One is student ridership. Every time a student gets on the bus, the bus driver clicks a little key that counts them. So we have a very direct measure of the number of students who are using their bus passes. And what we've seen is that from the beginning of the program, when there were only 300,000 student trips a year, to today, we've seen where we're up between 1.5 and 2 million student trips per year. So we, we've seen a over five-fold increase in the number of student trips. 
you know, our parking demand's been fairly stable. Without the program, it probably would have been quite a bit higher. So we would have been uh, pushed into building a parking structure sooner at some location on campus. Building parking structures uh, is an extremely expensive proposition. Uh, transit systems, you know, you have capacity that can be expanded uh, for less cost per unit number of users than you can uh, uh, develop the same or equivalent amounts of uh, expansion in your parking system. So I think over time it's really got to be a cheaper way to go. It's got pretty major environmental benefits. We did a survey a few years ago and saw that 42% of the trips that were being taken would have been taken in automobiles. So there are, are hundreds of thousands of car trips that are being avoided each year to, due to the student bus pass program. The reason this program has been so tremendously successful is that it was a collaborative effort. It was a collaborative effort between the students, the university administration, the city of Boulder Transportation Department, and the regional transportation district. This is an example, a great example, of what can be done when a number of uh, interested parties put their heads together. In Ohio, at Oberlin College, the Adam J. Lewis Center for Environmental Studies was built using the latest principles of ecological design. This innovative structure features renewable energy, non-toxic materials, and wastewater recycling. It's a living laboratory, one that students, faculty, staff, and community members have all played a role in building and maintaining. And we began this project uh, nearly five years ago uh, with an effort to engage students in the design of the building itself. We want a building that's light and airy. If the building was to be designed more uh, like a natural system and to be in interaction with natural systems. Uh, we wanted the building to be powered by sunlight. We wanted the building to function like a natural system in that no waste product would leave the building. Our goal is to have the building uh, become a net energy exporter, where it actually generates more power than it would be using. East of the building and in front of the building will be a natural habitat. And behind the building, that's going to be dedicated or devoted to uh, agricultural activity. One of the things that we wanted to do was to extend students' competence to include things like growing food, protection of soils, protection of biological diversity, capturing sunlight, all of the skills necessary uh, to remake the human presence in the world in a way that is genuinely lovely uh, and can be sustained over the long term. This building is pretty radically different from a lot of the, the buildings that you experience on campus in, in the sense that uh, it connects you to, to natural cycles. Uh, I sit in the, the building and I'm constantly aware of, of where the sun is. Uh, I have daylight pouring into my office. Um, I understand where my waste is going. Uh, I understand where the energy is coming from. It would be very difficult, I think, to have this building function without students. We could operate the building, but no one would know the importance of what we're doing here. So we, we want to use it as an educational tool. So uh, it's very important to involve the students there's huge advantages to this being in a campus setting. One of them being there's constant research going on. We build systems for, uh, for other institutions, and there's not a gang of motivated college students looking at it all the time, trying to understand what's going on. Student involvement has to be structured very carefully. You really need to, to give students parameters in which they can work. You have to let them know what you expect of them, what you need of them. So the building as it evolved became more than just a place in which classes were held. It becomes a place uh, that becomes educational because of the way it's designed and, and built and operated. So students will be engaged in uh, the implementation and maintenance. 